Hello everyone and welcome to another Stargate lore video. Today we're going to be talking about the Unus. I hope you know what you're doing. History. The Unus are a humanoid race with reptilian features from the planet P3X 888, which is also the homeworld of the Guo Old. Unus, in fact, in Guo Old means first ones, as in the first ones the Guo Old had conquered and enslaved. When the Guo Old learned how to use the Stargates, they took their armies and their slaves with them and began conquering the galaxy. The Unus were the main race used by the Guo Old for most of their history until about 10,500 BC when the Supreme System Lord Ra discovered Earth and subsequently humans. The Ghoul found human bodies to be easier to repair, and in general their hands and voices were easier to use and had greater ability compared to that of the Unuses. Unus I? Unus. And let's be honest here, looks probably played a part in that decision. I could have sworn I heard somewhere that Ra had ordered the Ghoul to stop using Unuses as host and use humans instead, but I can't remember where I heard it and I can't find any sources backing it up, so kind of ignore that, I guess? The official answer, as far as I can tell, as to why the Google stopped using the Unises is they just preferred using humans. And as time went on, the Unises were slowly phased out. Though we do know of at least two Google that continue to use Unises as host. The first being a Google that was trapped in a cave on the planet of Chimera by the Asgard, as Chimera was a planet protected under the Protected Planets Treaty. This was also the first time the SG-1 had learned the existence of the Unis. The second was a Gu'uld who used an Unus as a host who was in the service of the system Lord Sokar. This Gu'uld would travel to a planet which only has the name Medieval Planet and scares the people of the world into offering sacrifices under the guise of him being a demon before being stopped by SG-1. Interestingly enough, the first Gu'uld we ever met who used an Unus was also apparently in the service of Sokar before being trapped. So I guess Sokar is just kind of weird compared to the other system lords. Then again, when you choose the persona of the devil himself, I guess you are pretty weird. The first time SG-1 encountered Unus not under control of the Google world was on the Unuses in Google World's homeworld. Kinda duh there. When Unus had attacked the archaeological expedition there and made off with Dr. Jackson, the Unus, named Chaka, planned on sacrificing Daniel as part of a ritual rite of passage, in which case the tribe would eat Dr. Daniel Jackson. However, the two found a way to communicate with each other and had developed a friendship. And when the time came, Chaka asked the Alpha of his tribe to not kill Daniel. When the Alpha refused, Chaka and SG-1 killed the Alpha, which subsequently made Chaka the Alpha. Chaka offered Daniel membership in the tribe, but Daniel politely declined the offer. We would meet Chaka later when SG-1 had learned he had been captured by a group of humans who used the Unus as slaves ever since the Beast Wars. No, but can you imagine? Prior to this, the Unus had ruled the humans as slaves. This was really the Ghoul Old using the Unus, so sadly kind of a bit of misplaced blame here. When the Ghoul had abandoned the planet, as I said, the humans rose up in their beast wars to conquer the Unus. However, as time went on, inbreeding became a problem for the Unus, and it became harder and harder to control. The solution was to find more Unus. And they just happened to have the gate coordinates to the Unus's homeworld. SG-1 would go in and free Chaka, but he wanted to stay and help free his people. We would later find out he did do this and establish some kind of peace between the two races on the planet. Chaka would be encountered for a third and final time to help mediate a dispute between the Unus living on the planet P3X403 and Stargate Command. When Stargate Command was trying to set up a mining operation for Nequadria, but the mines were considered sacred to the Unus, as is where their ancestors died. Despite being a rather tense situation due to skirmishes from both sides, Chaka and Dr. Jackson were able to open up a dialogue with the Unus. When Dr. Jackson learned that the reason the Unuses were attacking was because the mine was sacred to them, he tried to point out there were laws on Earth protecting sacred burial sites and that they should just leave. However, when the United States government had learned there was a crap ton of quadri on the planet, the only amount they could find that could realistically rescue the Prometheus, which was at this point in time trapped off-world, they decided that the only logical course of action would be forced relocation. Ah, America. 
When Dr. Jackson went to explain to the units they pretty much had no choice but to surrender, he was somewhat horrified to learn that there was actually a crap ton of Unis on the planet. And after a soldier had gunned down an Unis for attempting to retrieve a necklace, the Unis made their move and surrounded the camp. Thankfully, diplomacy went out in the end, and Daniel was able to work out a trade deal with them. Essentially, the Unis would mine the Nequadria themselves and give it to Earth to help fight the Ghoul old. And assumingly, they would also be given food and supplies as an exchange. While this was the final time we saw the Unis, similar to humans due to their time in the Ghoul old Empire, there's probably thousands, if not millions, of them throughout the galaxy. We just haven't seen them. Biology. Biologically, the Unis were humanoid, but appeared to be reptilian in nature. They are an extremely strong and tough species, as they can take a full magazine to the chest and still keep fighting, though they will eventually die from these injuries. However, a ghoul possessing an Unis can take these injuries and survive, unlike a ghoul possessing a human, who if they were to take these injuries would need the aid of a sarcophagus to survive. Some other minor details about their biology is they have green blood, they have three fingers and a thumb with claws on them, and apparently their vision makes them see in something like this. I've also read that some Unis have developed a natural defense against the Goulds on the back of their necks, although this trait is not present in all Unis. I honestly couldn't figure out where this was, if it was stated in an RPG book or if this was stated in the show. It would make sense this would happen eventually as a product of evolution, but again, I don't know where this came from, and I can't really tell in the show if this is true or not. Society The Unis live in tribal societies in caves or underground, with a single alpha male ruling over the tribe. The rule can be passed on, but typically it's to someone who can, well, kill the alpha. For those living on the homeworld, we know they have a rite of passage for their young, where they go out to find worthy prey and bring it back to be feasted on by the tribe. We also know that these Unis have a deep fear of the water, as Ghoulds still live in them. For those living on P3X403, we know they have an understanding of things to be considered sacred and will mourn their dead. The Unis in general seem to have an understanding of art, as we saw the ones on the homeworld would draw pictures on their cave walls, and the ones on 430 would make scarecrows to act as a warning to scare away people from the mine. Una's clothing appears to be made out of pelts of fur or really anything they find and decide to add on. Though when Shaka came through to the SGC, he did appear to be wearing more quote-unquote civilized clothing. So it's possible that the Unis on the world he had come from had just learned how to make clothing on their own. In Unis society, showing submissiveness is a way of showing you are not a threat, and is the first step in engaging in diplomacy with an Unis. The second is offering a trade with the Unis in question. At that point, you can then begin to, well, talk. For language, the Unis seem to have one singular language that can be spoken by pretty much any Unis no matter where they come from. We have never seen a non-possessed Unis speak any other language other than their own fluently, even if they've been around humans all their lives. While one might assume, like the Wookiees of Star Wars, the Unis are just incapable of speaking any other language other than their own, the Ghoul possessed Unish do show they have the potential to speak other languages fluently. We've even seen some Unis say some words in English. So I think it is possible for Unis to learn other languages, they just never really had a chance to learn other languages. Technology Technologically, the Unis are very primitive compared to most other races we've seen. The highest weapon they've created technologically are spears and stone axes. Though given their claws and their strength, it sort of makes sense why they wouldn't make anything else. That being said, the Unis can learn how to use more advanced technology such as mining equipment. The only technology that is unique to the Unis is their neck bone necklaces, which are used as a defense against the Ghoul world. Relations with other races The Unis, understandably, have very poor relations with the Ghoul world and the Jaffa who serve them because of the whole slavery thing. Sadly, they also have somewhat poor relations with humans, as Unis attack humans as either prey or without making the reason clearer, and humans have either enslaved Unis or view them as monsters or demons due to their appearance. However, thanks to the efforts of people like Daniel and Shaka, human and Unis relations have somewhat been mended. Fun Facts For fun facts, I found two. 
While we only know of three worlds the Unis lived on in the unmade Stargate video game Stargate Worlds, a fourth planet would have been added. A, a pet? A pet? A pet? I pet? I pet. We don't really know anything about this planet other than the fact it has a waterfall, pyramid, two moons, a stargate, a crater that was under the control of the Stargate Union. I'm definitely gonna have to make a video on that in the future. And of course, a population of Unus. The second is that the Unus had a subspecies called the Kikan, Kikan, Kikaka, Kikan, Kikan the Tiger, Kikan, Khan? I'm going with that. They were introduced in the Stargate SG-1 First Steps, the Stargate Unexplored Worlds role-playing source book. God, that was a mouthful. Anyway, the evolved from a group of Unis that the Gould had abandoned. They were smaller, weaker, and less durable than their Unis cousins, and even lacked claws, though they did apparently have long nails. Although they were still stronger than humans. In relation to humans, they had about equal intelligence, however their minds were more orderly and more logical. While this made them great problem solvers, they were also pretty poor at innovations. While there were those who broke from this mold, they were respected for their accomplishment in relation to the group, but they were not admired for the way they went about it. Another trait that made them different from Unis is they have a bigger commitment to cooperation in their communities. The <coughs> were also peaceful in nature, but unlike the Nox or the Tolan, they did not shy away from battle, and they were even known to be self-sacrificing if it meant saving the community. And that was the Unis. In my opinion, a very cool alien race. Given how much Stargate relied on the aliens being transplanted humans, it was always nice to see them actually make a proper alien design. And the Unis are a great example of when they do it at their best. They have a cool design, great backstory, are just a lot of fun to watch. Look at that smile. How could you hate anything with that smile?